Howdy folks, I'm your host Aaron Heath. I'd like to take a moment and thank you for downloading, subscribing, and most importantly, listening to episode number 78 without audio clips or music or any of that. And the show is the Gun Rights in Texas podcast. Well, you may be wondering why there is no intro music. Well, that's kind of my fault. I have an old Android Nexus 7 tablet that I have used for, good lord, I would say since the Nexus 7 was relatively a new tablet. I mean, it was a new model. And I haven't quite run it with the most current software and sometimes i haven't ran it with the most stable of software and that kind of caught up to me and right now it seems to be stuck in an upgrade cycle you see i thought it would be a good idea to update it to a newer version of android and of course i cannot be happy with stock android no i have to run cyanogen mod which is a modified version of the Android operating system. It's a very pure version, but it's a very custom version at the same time. Well, the tablet didn't quite like me doing this to it. It was okay with an older version, but it's not happy with the newer version. I don't know what went wrong because I just started doing this and then thought, well, I could get an episode out. Looked at the tablet, or maybe I won't. But enough rambling about that. Let's just say for now the tablet is broken and probably won't get fixed for a little while, unless it cures itself. Now the reason it probably won't get fixed for a little while, I have another tablet. That tablet was purchased for another function and it may fill in for this one on this function. I'll go into that later, but first, let me just say that the podcast is available on social media. You can find it on Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter. You can find it all of those things on all those. It's on Instagram. Go to the website gunrightsintexas.com and up in the top you see this big old banner or it's not big, it's it's relatively reasonably sized. It says Gun Rights in Texas, the podcast for the Texas gun owner. And then to the right of that banner are something like 2 4 6 12 icons. There's 12 icons up there, and um, it starts with iTunes, then it's got Android, then it's got Stitcher, and it's got a whole bunch more. Go there. That'll let you get in touch with me. That will let you find me on social media. That'll even let you find where to get the freaking podcast. In fact, I mean, that pretty much wraps up how to do all the audio clips in one little fell swoop. But here's the beauty of it. I'm still going to give you the email address. I'll give it to you now, and I'll give it to you later towards the end of the show. All you got to do to send me an email is send it to Aaron at GunRightsInTexas.com. I'll get that email. I will read it. I will respond to it. Lord, have I ever been dealing with email. And we'll go from there. Speaking of email, I am doing this episode off the cuff because, well, not only did I break my tablet, we have had this horrible event in West Texas. I keep blinking, but the weather refuses to change. It's freaking cold out there. You see, right after Christmas, we had a blizzard, which is why this episode is not episode 79, but it is episode 78. Now, you may be thinking, well, this is the same week that you plan to release 78. It is, but I also plan to release a post-open carry is legal episode as well. That was going to be two episodes, one week. What a surprise. Well, it didn't happen. But... Guess what? We are here. We're doing this episode and we're going to talk about open carry being legal. Well, let's talk about that. At 1201, January 1, 2016, I went out to my Jeep Wrangler, just like I said I was going to. I got in it. Actually, it wasn't at 1201 when I got in it. 1201 is when I put it in gear and started backing out. I get in the Jeep. I back out. I get on the road. I drive to the gas station, just like I said I would. I'm open carrying just like I said I would, and I start to fill the Jeep up just like I said I would, and then failure set in. You see, originally I said I was going to take the Jeep, I was going to fill it up, I was going to open carry while I was doing it, and I was going to come home, it was going to be uneventful. Well, I had a failure in that plan. The failure was the gas pump was running super slow, and because it was running super slow, I gave up. I did not fuel the Jeep, and I had something like mm, a few bucks in gas 
and the tank added as a result. However, that was the only part of the plan that failed. I was still at the gas pump for quite a while, longer than it would have been if I'd been if I'd been get filling up, and, and the pump had worked correctly, but I was filling up. It failed, but I open carried. I was at the scene, realizing that it did not give me a receipt for what little bit I did uh, pay for. I go inside to where the clerk is. I'm still open carrying. Ask for my receipt. Walk back out to the Jeep. Get in it. Leave the gas uh, leave the gas station, drive home, go inside, take my 1911 off my hip, remove the holster from the belt, and by the way, to the listener that figured out my mailing address and sent me the El Paso saddle, saddlery holster with the thank you note for putting the podcast on and covering the legislative session, thank you. I, I know I have, I think I've mentioned that before. But I want to say thank you again. That was a very nice gift. And I understand you didn't want to be identified and you didn't identify yourself to me. But still, that was a great thing to do and I appreciate it. I did have another outside waistband holster for my 1911. It wasn't as beautiful. It wasn't as it wasn't as acceptable. This one's nicer. This one has a retention strap where my other one does not. But I wore that holster. I wore my 1911, or one of them, and nothing happened, except for the gas pump didn't work. Maybe the gas pump refused to serve me because I was open carrying. Quick, somebody, get C.J. Grisham in open carry Texas on the line and get them to protest that gas pump. No, that's just a joke. (laughs) Although it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't do it. But I also, before midnight, I started a thread over at the Texas CHL forum called Jan, or instead of January, is just abbreviated Jan 1st, 2016 Open Carry Reports. And while I'm recording this episode, it's 10 pages long, um, and the thread's not 24 hours old yet. And there's some taking it off the tracks and getting it back onto the tracks, and it's, it's a pretty epic little thread. The thread I am going to miss, though, I'm trying to find it. And I am still trying to find it. You see, this is what happens when I don't have a plan. I turn to the internet. And when I turn to the internet, I get... mm, Let's see the easiest way to describe it. Well, to be honest, I get tied up doing that and quit talking. Anyhow, the thread that I was looking for is some... Oh, there it is. It actually is Open Carry Countdown. I don't want to miss this thread because it's no longer effective. At one point, and this thread got up to 31 pages, at one point we were actually, uh, people on this thread were posting pictures, there was some military hardware in the pictures, and all the pictures dealt with how many days there were left, and then we got down to the hours, and this was a very, I mean, this was a very creative thread, and I'm going to miss it. Anyhow, those are some of the threads over there, but there were a few threads that uh, really caught my interest. There's a thread from a guy, Pistol Asterix Packer, P-S-T-L Asterix P-A-K-R, titled, Almost Went to Jail. Anyways, he's talking about they've got a 30-07 sign. Looks like it's printed on a single sheet of uh, 8.5 by 11 paper. And he carried past the 30-07 sign while openly carrying. Police were called, and basically he nearly went to jail. Why? I'm not too sure. But that particular thread is five pages long at this time, and who knows? But there are a few other threads that I really had my eye on. But what gets me is there's there's a core of people showing up on the Texas CHL forum, and this is these people are doing something interesting. They're talking about the unwarranted or the improper attacks on open carry Texas, or the illogical attacks on open. Open Carry, Texas. And the truth of the matter is, Open Carry, Texas has done more damage to gun rights than anything. And I'm looking for the thread that really gets it. It's like almost Second Amendment supporters. Here it is, almost 2A supporters. Anyways, partially through this thread, someone shows up and starts talking about why are we picking on OCT. Well, he's the first person to bring up OCT in the thread. 
Now this guy's got less than 100 posts on the forum, and I mean, it just smells like somebody trying to stir something up in the pro OCT business. But I replied to him, and anyways, he goes, as I've, and I'm going to read what this gentleman said. His username is Stinger Agent, all one word. As I've said in posts before, I'm not a member of OCT, but I honestly don't see what, why what they did was a big deal. What is the difference between them going into a Whataburger with a holstered handgun, hypothetically, if it was legal before an hour from now, and going into one with an AR-15 slung over the back? Both weapons can inflict serious damage. There's plenty of pistol mags out there with the same capacity as an AR. If it was reversed and rifle open carry was banned but pistols weren't, and they all went in with pistols, the same people would have freaked out. A gun is a gun. You can pop off a handgun just as fast as a legal AR. Well, I replied to this, and I replied to it with the following. Think about it like this. You have person A who, and this is a reference to the topic, or to the topic of the thread, which is almost Second Amendment supporters, whether or not someone can almost support the Second Amendment or almost fully support it or not. And my reply was this. Think about it like this. You have a person who 100% supports the Second Amendment but uses in-your-face tactics to get their point across, or his point across. Person A, while a pure supporter, pushes more fence straddlers to the other side than brings over to our side. Now let's take person B, who is a 90% supporter of the Second Amendment. But he doesn't do anything to hurt the cause, he just doesn't support everything. He brings people over to our side without pushing anyone over to the other side. Which one do you want helping your cause? And think about it. Who do you want to support your cause do you want the guy who will support it 100 percent but push more people over to the other side against you than they bring to your side or do you want the guy who he doesn't 100 percent support you but he's not going to push anybody over to the other side while he's bringing people over to your side and that's really what it boils down to i went on with an explanation of the dutton amendment being dead because of grisham's stunt in oklahoma as well as OCT and Katy and Open Carry Tarrant County's antics and such, as well as because of Stickland's comments, which if I had my audio tablet, I would run that audio clip, but we've heard that enough. The thing is, many people in the Open Carry movement have this, if you're not with us, you're against us attitude. And that's not the case. That's not the case at all. Sometimes, somebody that's not with you It's just somebody that's not with you. It's like that saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And that's not necessarily the case. The enemy of your enemy may be your enemy as well. And people really don't get that when it comes to the open carry movement. And it can be quite bad. But hey, I'm rambling, so let's talk about open carry being legal. You know what? There are reports coming in. I'm trying to find it. Anyways... Open Carry Texas had their official uncovering of the handgun at the Capitol. I don't don't know how well that went off, but all the preliminary reports say it was a relatively sane event, except there was one guy toting around a long gun when everybody else was there carrying handguns. Okay, why are you going to carry around a long gun now that handgun carry is legal? Or licensed handgun carry is legal? probably doesn't have a license. Why doesn't he have a license? Who knows? But now we have something to worry about. We have to worry about where do we go from here. One thing I want to do, I want to take, and a gentleman suggested that the legislation that we have in effect now, that basically said, if a government entity posts a 30-06 sign on a location that is not statutorily off-limits, then they are liable for it. Well, we need to extend that. We need to extend it so that it covers 30-07, and we need to extend it so that there's a private cause of action on it. You may be wondering, why would we want a private cause of action? That's because people like me and you could take our cities to court, and we could save the, we could actually save the state government the trouble of fighting this. Any kind of private cause of action would have to be dependent on the governor, or not governor, the attorney general's office 
not taking action themselves. But that's where we're at. That's what we need to concentrate on, among other things. What else do we need to concentrate on? Well, we need to concentrate on making it easier to get a concealed handgun license. We need to concentrate on making it cheaper to get a concealed handgun license. And more importantly, we need to remove off-limits locations. We need to do everything in our power to get rid of these locations that are off-limits to concealed carry and to open carry now. The more we work to get rid of those, the more power we have. Now, some folks will say, well, you didn't mention constitutional carry. No, I didn't. The reason I didn't mention it, Grisham, OCT, Watkins, Open Carry Tarrant County, the Yahoo's over it, come and take it, not the podcast, but the gun rights group, they're going to be pushing for open carry, unlicensed carry. And as they push for unlicensed carry, it's going to cause a problem. They're going to kill it again, just like they killed it this year, or last year. And because they're going to kill it, we're, we cannot even think about picking that cause up. In fact, we don't even need to call it constitutional carry. We need to call it unlicensed carry. Because this is a right that predates the Constitution. When you call it constitutional carry, you're saying the Constitution gives you this right. And that is not the case. The Constitution only protects this right that existed before the Constitution did. Just before Christmas, I bought myself one of these uh, quadrocopters that people like to call drones. Okay? Now, let's say that a case that is being made right now while I'm recording this and I'm recording this about 11 o'clock on January 1 of 2016. Let's say this case is being made right now. I order it, and it arrives to me, it arrives for me right before I start recording the next episode. I take this brand new case, and let's say it's, uh, let's say the case is called Sturdy Box. That's a good name for it. And I put my drone or my UAV, or my UAS, or my quadrocopter, whatever you want to call it, in the sturdy box case, and I carry my quadrocopter, I don't know where, am I carrying a quadrocopter, or am I carrying a sturdy box case? Well, actually, I'm carrying both, but I cannot call the, the quadrocopter a sturdy box quadrocopter because it's not a sturdy box quadrocopter. It predates the case, and that's why I cannot call unlicensed carry constitutional carry because the right to keep and bear arms predates the constitution which predates the second amendment which predates us in the end in the end the fact of the matter is unlicensed carry or constitutional carry or whatever you want to call it it's not going to happen the way that a lot of people think it will it is very much dead on arrival for 2017 if we keep throwing things in the face of the public, if we keep throwing things in the face of the legislature, we keep sticking feet in doors, we're going to kill the chances of passing that legislation. And right now, I guarantee you, you go to any legislator's office and you take a poll of the ones that you can drive to within, say, eight hours of your home address. You take a poll of them. The majority of them are going to be opposed to passing unlicensed carry. Not because they disagree with it, but because of the jackasses like Corey Watkins and C.J. Grisham. And that's really... I don't know how to put it. And I'm going to abandon that train of thought. People talk about how Texas law is so draconian on guns in the, in the open carry camps. Do you know what Texas law is really draconian about? Try unmanned aerial vehicles or unmanned aerial systems or quadrocopters or drones or whatever the heck you want to call it. If you got a if you got a, the ability to record video or still images on your quadrocopter or drone or UAS or UAV, I got news for you. The state of Texas really doesn't like you. I believe it's a uh, government code section 423, but it's broke down. The first one gives you a definition of the word image. An image means any capturing of sound waves, thermal, infrared, or infrared, <laughs> I want to mispronounce it, ultraviolet, visible light, or other electromagnetic waves, odor, or other conditions existing on or about real property in this state or an individual located on that property. Now, 43.002 throws in non applicability. And it basically says it is lawful to capture an image using an unmanned aircraft in this state. 
and then it gives you a list of 21 exceptions. The problem is these are mostly for government, for, for the purpose of professional or scholarly research and development for another academic person, yada, 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 is number one, or in airspace designated as a test site or range authorized by the FAA, or as part of an operation, exercise, or mission of any branch of the United States military, if the image is captured by a satellite for the purposes of mapping. Now here's, and you know, that one is used for civil, or non-government and government entities. This one's more for non-government entities. If the image is captured by or for an electric or natural gas utility, with the consent of the individual who owns or lawfully occupies the real property captured in the image, or pursuant to a valid search or arrest warrant. We're back to government functions there. If the image is captured by law enforcement, by a law enforcement authority, or person who is under contract with or otherwise, yada, 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 whole bunch of yada, more law enforcement authorities things, at the scene of a spill or suspected spill of hazardous materials, for the purpose of fire suppression, for the purpose of rescuing a person whose life or well-being is in imminent danger. If the image is captured by a Texas licensed real estate broker, yada, 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 it's legal to capture an image of real property or a person on real property that is within 25 miles of the United States border. Or if you're no more than eight feet off the ground in a public place, you can capture an image. If the image was captured without using any electronic, mechanical, or other means to amplify the image beyond normal human perception. Or of public real property or a person on that property. In other words, you could go to, I don't know, a county park and you can collect images there. Just don't collect images of the property that's not owned by the government that's next to it. And definitely don't catch images of people on property that's not owned by the government. But it goes on and on and on. But then they got 40, 42303, illegal use of unmanned aircraft to capture an image. And it goes on and on and on. And then they keep, they actually have an offense where you possess, disclose, display, distribute, or use an image captured in violation of 42303 or 423.003. And then they got uh, the operation of an unmanned aircraft over critical infrastructure facility. And that is a huge one. But the thing is, using, an, using a UAS or UAV or drone or quadricopter or whatever you want to call it with any kind of video or picture taking capability is pretty much illegal with a few very limited exceptions. But yeah, section 423 of the government code has a lot of headaches for owners of quadricopters. And this is pretty draconian. You think Texas gun laws are draconian? Take a look at what, what all you have to do in order to operate a unmanned aerial vehicle or unmanned aerial system or a drone or a quadricopter. First off, you have to register with the FAA. And there's no law that says this. This is just regulation. Then, once you have it registered, then you can go out and fly it. But there's a whole host of problems with flying it too. FAA has a whole bunch of things you gotta make sure you're doing. Then, you have to make sure you're not violating state law as well. And state law is pretty much, you can't do this unless you can find one of these very, very, very narrowly defined exceptions to apply to your case. No, Texas gun laws are not draconian. They're just not the best. However, we're going to work on making them the best. It will take time. And the more that people that support the amendment 100% but use in-your-face tactics go out there and push people to the other side of the fence, the longer it's going to take. When somebody's straddling the fence, don't get in their face. They might cut themselves on the barbed wire in a place that they don't really feel like having described. And they're definitely going to stay on the other side of the fence from you after you hurt them. But you know what? I've rambled on long enough. Open carry is legal. And I've open carried two different guns today. In fact, I'll tie the UAV, UAS, unmanned systems, whatever you want to call it, quadricopters, drones, or whatever. I'll tie that in with open carry. Me and... Me and a few friends went out, and one of these friends is a pilot of an honest-to-God aircraft. Me and some friends went out to where we hunt hogs, 
We got all the snow on the ground. We took two four-wheel drive vehicles. We get out there. We've got permission to hunt there. We've got permission to use the quadrocopter there. We send the quadrocopter up, and we start scouting our hunting lease. That's right. We're scouting our hunting lease. More of a chance to play with the quadrocopter and use it in a safe, legal environment than it is anything else for me. But it also lets me get out there and check the property, see how everything looks. But anyways, we send the quadrocopter up. We use it a little bit. We can see the game trails. We can also see that there's not that much activity in the snow. That means these hogs are not really that close to our field right now. Why? Well, that's because... As cold as it is, they're staying closer to their food uh, and water supplies instead of coming to this water supply that we've got that's a pretty good water supply for them. And with all the water on the ground, they don't have to go get water and just pick it up in their mouth off the ground. I'm not kidding when I say I have snow in my yard. I have snow drifts in my yard as tall as my knees. I'm nearly six foot tall, and I have snow drifts in my yard almost as tall as my knees. And the hogs aren't going to go out and get water at the pond that's on the land that we got a permission to hunt. While I'm doing this, I'm open carrying a Sig P220. And this one's in a, I believe it's a Bianchi holster, but it's got a thumb strap retention. It's a slide type holster though. So the lower the lower half of the slide is exposed along with the grip. Weird looking little holster, but I like it. But there's a lot that we can do with this that I had never thought about before, and we're going to try it. I've actually thought about trying different ways to use this UAV, UAS, drone, quadrocopter, whatever you want to call it. I've been thinking about ways I can use it for the podcast, like when I go hunting or I'm out at the range, I can send it out to check the target, or we can do videos using it. This is more so that I can learn the technology, see what I can use it for, and things like that. Anyhow, I think I'm going to let you go. I'm going to wrap this episode up. I'm already past the 30 minute mark, it looks like. After all the condens, after condensing it down, it may be less than 30 minutes. I don't know. But I need to get this episode wrapped up. So please, if you want to email me, send it to Aaron at gunrightsintexas.com or go to the website, gunrightsintexas.com. Look in the upper right part of the screen when you go there. You'll see all the little icons. Click on the ones that you can, you feel like using and they'll either get you the show or they'll, let you get in contact with me or they'll let you find me on social media they do all that and when it's all said and done like this episode is all we can say is stay safe and carry responsibly and this is where this sign off music would go but it's not here and that will qualify as our post episode rant 